Let's look at an overview of how glucose is turned into ATP by the process of cellular respiration. The respiration, cellular respiration is made up of many different steps. So I'm going to go one by one through these different stages of cellular respiration. The first stage involves breaking down the six carbon molecule of glucose into two three carbon molecules of pyruvate. This step is called glycolysis. So you see that right off the bat, we're splitting this molecule and making it smaller, making it into two separate smaller molecules, and these are exactly the same. And during the process, we also make some ATP. Now, you were starting with a bigger molecule, breaking down to smaller, some energy is released, which the cell harvests to make ATP. Next, the cell transforms the molecule of pyruvate into a molecule of acetyl-CoA. This is a preparation phase because the molecule of pyruvate, the way it is, cannot go to the next phase of cellular respiration. So usually this is called the grooming phase or, ox or pyruvate grooming or pyruvate oxidation. But the basically take home message is that pyruvate needs to be transformed into acetyl-CoA before the cell can go on. And during this process, uh, what happens is one of the molecules from this three carbon pyruvate is removed and it gives us acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA is ready to go to the next step, which is called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. They're interchangeable. If you use any of them, you'd be okay. So acetyl-CoA goes into this cycle. This is a series of chemical reactions that start with one molecule, goes through a series of steps, and then goes back to the original molecule, which will receive acetyl-CoA. So there's an original molecule here. Acetyl-CoA comes in, accepts. Uh, it's accepted by this cycle, and it goes through the reactions. Now, at this step, these two carbon molecule is going to break down to the final CO2-1 carbon molecule. Um, and at this point, pretty much this six carbon molecule has been totally disintegrated and turned into CO2. But during the process, the cell also makes some ATP. So, so far, uh, we've got two stages at which the cell makes ATP, but the bulk of the ATP production happens at the last stage, which is called the oxidative phosphorylation, which is a complex process. It basically involves um, a process where an electron moves down a stairways fashion um, in which as the electron moves down, the energy is harvested to make lots and lots of ATP. Now, don't worry about if this is like a black box. I will explain it to you later. Now, you may be wondering, well, where are these electrons coming from? Well, when we break down glucose into little pieces, not only we use the um, energy to make ATP, but during cellular respiration, the cell strips glucose and whatever little bits of it is left that goes through this process, it strips it of, a, of its electrons. So we're really totally disintegrating this glucose molecule, not only breaking down into pieces, we're going to steal all of its electrons as well. And these electrons, they are going to be a, a source of high energy, which was going to give us a huge amount of ATP. And uh, again, don't worry about it. This is just a summary and I'll explain later. So uh, what's going to happen to these electron molecules? Are you going to go down these stairs forever? Well, no. The final acceptor of the electron at the end of cellular respiration is oxygen. So this is the step that is used um, in cellular. This is the step that oxygen is used in cellular respiration. The oxygen that you breathe in comes into play. So the oxygen in combination with two positively charged hydrogen ions 
and electrons makes water. So that's the uh, summary of the different steps of cellular respiration. And as I mentioned, I'm going to go in more detailed into each step.